Hello friends, we are presenting to you a series of programs on mathematics for class 12 and a sub series in this series is a series of six programs on matrices and determinants. The first of these programs will be an introduction to the matrices. To introduce you to this idea of matrices, let us take the situation of two factories, factory A and factory B which are manufacturing bulbs and tubes. The factory A is manufacturing 3000 bulbs and 1500 tubes and the factory B is manufacturing 2000 bulbs and 1700 tubes. Factory A producing 3000 bulbs, 1500 tubes, factory B manufacturing 2000 bulbs and 1700 tubes. In a comparative way, the two informations can be compiled in this shape, factory A and factory B and we write the number of bulbs produced in the columns, tubes in the second column and this is in respect of the two factories. Let us take another situation. This time we try to compare the number of items being stocked by three different stores. Let us take the example of store A, store B and store C. They are having four different items stocked and the items in respect of store A are here in the first row, store B, second row and store C in this third row. column 1 in respect of item 1, column 2, item 2, column 3, item 3 and column 4 in item 4. Now you see that we have in a very convenient way represented the given information in rows and columns and whenever such a information is represented in rows and columns, we say that we are getting what is called a matrix. This idea of the representation which is called the matrix and the connected properties were propounded by Arthur Cayley in 1858. After Arthur Cayley had propounded this theory and the various properties related to this, this entire idea is now finding a wide ranging of applications and in fact in case we count a few geometry is one of them, economics, statistics, chemistry, physics, psychology, demography, sociology, games theory, allocation of expenses, budgeting, social accounting, inter-industrial economics and many more. And in case we come to the field of mathematics, the solution of a system of linear equations is finding a very convenient tool in the use of matrices and linear programming itself is entirely based on the theory of matrices. Now remember when we represented the information in respect of the two factories, we wrote factory A and factory B here then we wrote the bulbs and tubes. Now in case we understand it clearly that whatever we are writing is factory wise in the rows and the item wise in the columns, then only this information can suffice. And similarly, in case of the three stores, we can have the information stocked like this. Row wise the three stores, column wise the four items these individual entries in all the cases wherever we are writing the matrix are called the elements of that matrix. Now these matrix comprise of elements but does it mean that we have got any way of changing these elements to changing the places of these elements. Now clearly in case in this very example I replace this 300 here 
by this 350 here or this 400 goes here at 500, then the entire information will alter. So, you have got a very important information to digest that is the elements have got a unique place, they have got a fixed place and the moment you change the elements, then the entire information alters. Now, when we talk of these elements, then we come over to now those matrices where we are trying to write the information in various rows and columns. Remember, in the first example, we had two rows and two columns. In the second example, we had three rows and we had four columns. Now, likewise, I could be writing an information like this. This could be in relation to the roll numbers assigned to the students sitting in three rows. And I could further be going over to writing that in the first row that is all even numbers which are less than 10, then all even numbers greater than 10, all even numbers which are greater than 20 and so on. But supposing I stop here, then I get this matrix information. There could be an information which could only be like this and there can be further information which is like this. This gives us a very clear indication that whenever we are using different number of rows and different number of columns, then we should be able to designate these matrices by the number of rows and columns being used. And we come to a very important notation that is the order of the matrix. By the order of the matrix, we mean that in case a matrix has got three rows and four columns, we say this is a 3 by 4 matrix. Two rows and two columns, we say it is a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, two rows and four columns, we say it is 2 by 4 matrix. And now, here there are four rows and three columns, we say it is 4 by 3 matrix. In general, in case we go on to a situation where there are many elements which we are writing, we will be giving you two different informations here that is how to write many elements and also at the same time how to write the order of that matrix. Let us have a look at this. We have got here elements designated as A11, A12, A13, A1n and so on. 1, 1 means the first row, first column, A, 2, 3 means second row, third column, A, 3, n means third row, nth column and so on and the last element here is mth row, nth column and the order of this matrix is m by n. We find that a whole lot of elements can be very conveniently represented in a matrix. Now, in this matrix which has got so many elements, how do I assign the suffix to a general element, an element by which by replacing the suffixes we can get any element. We write it like a i j. This a i j means ith row, this could be first, this could be fifth, this could be nth, this could be mth, whatever it is and jth column. This is how we assign the places to these general elements. Having talked of this, introduced ourselves to the matrix, that is a representation of information in rows and columns and having talked of that every single entry in a matrix is called an element of that matrix, we come over to certain special situations. Can an, can a given matrix always have 
only more than one column, more than one row? No. We come to a special situation where I am writing this information about store A only. And I write that first item is 300 units, second item is 450 units, third item is 500 units, and the fourth item is 200 units. And this is my matrix information. Means only one row. Second, I have this equation 3x cube, 2x square, 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. I write the columns of, I'm sorry, the coefficients of x cube, x square, x and 5. That means all the coefficients of the equation. That is, this is 3 minus 2, 4 minus 5. One row, one row, maybe any number of columns. Further, I could be writing even numbers which are less than 20. Again, a single row. Such a matrix is called a row matrix. Having talked of this row matrix, naturally we would be going over to writing the similar kind of information in the columns also. Can you guess what will be a column matrix? Yes, just as the row matrix was a single row and as num many number of columns as possible, the column matrix will be a single column and number of rows does not matter. So, this is one example of a column matrix. Another example of a column matrix. In case of store, in case the information instead of writing row wise, I put down the information this way. That is the number of units stored in the store. Then again, I get what is called as the column matrix. Having talked of this row matrix and the column matrix, we are on to another situation where we find that sometimes the information comes out to be nil, 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 that is 0, 0, 0. And that can happen in any situation. So, in that case, in case we are writing a matrix of this type or this type or for that matter this or go on to this, means an element a matrix of any order where all the elements are 0 will be called the 0 matrix. Now, we have seen that we can talk about the row matrix, the column matrix, single column, row matrix, single row and 0 matrix. From there on, we go on to another very special kind of matrix where the number of rows and the number of columns happen to be the same. I give you an example. This is one matrix. Three rows, three columns. Four, five, nine, ten. This is another information. Two rows and two columns. So, this is a square matrix. This is a square matrix. What would you call this? Yes, this also is a square matrix, one row, one column. So, single item element entry gives us a square matrix, this is a square matrix, this is a square matrix. This idea of square matrix leads us on to very many other kinds of matrices. Let us try to have a look at those. We write a square matrix in this shape. Say we have got A. 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 2, 1, 3. Remember this was a square matrix, but now in case I write another one where I have got A, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is B, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is C, where A, B, C are not 0, they are not equal. Means we have got the condition that A, B, C, they are all different. Because when they become equal, we will be getting another name. 
this is called a diagonal matrix where the diagonal elements are only present. But in case the situation comes up where A, B, C are all equal means we get an element here. These are all the same because A, B, C have now become equal. In that case, we are getting still a diagonal matrix, but has got a special name. We call it a scalar matrix. In this scalar matrix, in case we bring in a further change, that is instead of having this A, 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 I bring in now all ones then in that case I get identity element. So, I have got a diagonal element uh, diagonal matrix, I have got a scalar matrix and I have got here as an identity matrix. Let us quickly review this this is a square matrix. A square matrix becomes a diagonal matrix when these elements are all 0 except the diagonal. The diagonal element, uh, uh, matrix becomes a scalar matrix in case all these elements are equal, but in case all of these become 1 then it becomes an identity matrix. Now, having seen this, the identity matrix, the scalar matrix, the diagonal matrix, we now come over to finding certain other names in case of matrices. We found that when we represented the information about the factories and the stores, we had written the factories on the left hand side, that is, the row wise information was in respect of factories and the column wise information was in respect of the bulbs and tubes. Similarly, in case of stores, the stores we kept to the rows and the items on the columns. Now, supposing the same information I in respect of another situation I write like this that is I put down here factory A and factory B and this time the products I put down here 30, 150, 200, now, there are three items I am considering and then I put down here as 40, 130, 250. This is item 1, item 2, item 3. We have seen already this information in case of factory A and factory B being written as 30, 150 and then 200 and this as 40. 130 and 250. This information and this information are the same, but the representation is different. Means this information from here and this information from here has been transposed. Because the two matrices are giving the same information we call one as the transpose of the other and if I call this as A and this as A dash then A dash is the transpose of A. So, we find that we can alter the information in a way that the resultant uh, uh, matrix will be the transpose of another matrix. Let us see another situation. What will be the transpose of this matrix that I am writing? This is matrix A. What will be the transpose? Yes, simple process. Change the first row into column, second row into second column third row into third column, fourth row into 
this was a 4 by 3 matrix this has become now 3 by 4 matrix this order does not change in case of a square matrix but in case of a matrix which is not square the rows and column information in the order will of course undergo a change this brings us on to another situation where we could be having certain other kinds of matrices where the transpose could be resulting in certain interesting situations. Say for instance, I have got this matrix. This is a very cleverly constructed matrix. I will show you what the relation between the elements is soon as I write the transpose. The transpose will be 4, 5, 6 means this first row becomes the column. The second row becomes the second column. The third row becomes the third column. Let us compare the two matrices 4 here, 4 here, 5, 5, 6, 6 this is 5, this is 5, this is 3, this is 3, this is 4, this is 4, 6 and 6, 4 and 4, 2 and 2 means all the elements are identical. Whatever place you choose, you find the same element in the 2. This kind of situation where the transpose of a matrix is the matrix itself, we call such a matrix as a symmetric matrix. I said that we have constructed this very cleverly, yes, in case you look at the diagonal, elements on either side, they are the same. So, instead of going in to find the transpose, just to look at the matrix itself can tell us whether it is symmetric or not. The very idea of symmetric, in case it was properly drawn and you fill the paper, the 5 will come on 5, 6 will come on 6 and 4 will come on 4. The next, supposing the situation is that we have got a matrix of this kind. Can you call this a symmetric matrix? Run a simple test. No, this is not because diagonal, okay, no problem. 4, this is 3. The test here itself fails. 5 and 5 is all right, 4 and 4 is all right. So, to go to the symmetry, every single element compared from the diagonal must match. See another situation. Now, this is minus 4, 0, and minus 6 here. Then you have got 5 you got 6, you got 0. What happens to this? Along the diagonal, in case you draw the line, this is 4 minus 4, numerically equal, but opposite in sign. Minus 5, 5, numerically equal, but opposite in sign. Minus 6 and 6, again the same situation. This, of course, is not a symmetric matrix, but has got a special property. And that special property we will discover soon as we write the transpose of this matrix. Let us do that. The transpose of this matrix will be what? We put down the first row as first column, the second row as second column, the third row as the third column what have you got now? 0 matches, 4 minus 4 opposite in sign, minus 5, 5 opposite in sign, minus 4, 4, 0, okay. minus 6, 6 again opposite, 5 minus 5, 6 minus 6, 0, 0. They seem to be giving us 
a different kind of symmetric information which is not exactly symmetric this is a skew symmetric information that is this kind of matrix is called a skew symmetric we have got the skew symmetric matrix in this case. So, we find that we have up till now discussed about the idea of a matrix what is a matrix the information given in rows and columns and included and closed in braces or brackets whatever you want to call that we have got what the elements of a matrix are we have gone on to find out what is the general way of writing a matrix we from there went on to find out what is the row matrix what is the column matrix we came over to find the zero matrix the identity matrix we came over to the diagonal matrix from the diagonal matrix we found that the scalar matrix is this identity element is also there that means the identity matrix is also there we came from there over to symmetric and skew symmetric matrices these ideas you will be able to grasp better only in case you construct some of these matrices or look at different matrices and identify them into these various categories and after this in the next program we will be going over to give you the operation on these matrices that will be our second program thank you